Hello and welcome everyone to the College of Science lecture series. I am Noel and I will be your moderator this afternoon. So first, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude as this event would not have been possible without the work of the College of Science Socials Committee, of the College of Science Lecture Series Committee, of the Systems Net Office, and of the Office of the Public Affairs. This is also in celebration of the College of Science Week 2021 under the theme Kasiana, Pagpapatuloy ng Siyensya sa Gitna ng Pandemya. This is also in celebration of UP Baguio's 60th anniversary after re-establishment under the theme UP Baguio at 60 from 1961 to 2021, Formations, Transformations. As this is an event celebrated under the College of Science, let us all watch a message from the Dean of the College of Science, Dean Dimfna and Javier. So thank you so much, Dean B or Dean Javier, for that very wonderful message. 
Now, before I introduce to you our guest speaker, let me just go through a few preliminaries or some final reminders. So first, the entire proceedings of this webinar will be recorded for documentation purposes. Also, all attendees of the webinar, except for the moderator and speaker, should keep their camera switched off and their microphones on mute during the webinar and subsequent open forum. Also, in case the webinar is interrupted due to a technical problem, all are asked to wait for 10 minutes to give the meeting hosts time to resolve the problem or in case the problem cannot be fixed, to announce that the webinar has been suspended and will be rescheduled. Also, during the forum or the open forum, all those wanting to ask questions should send their queries via the Q&A feature of the Zoom meeting or the comment section of the YouTube streaming. Also, the technical team will determine which among the questions sent will be read by the moderator and the order they will be asked. The moderator will also acknowledge the member of the audience who fielded that particular question, and as such, participants are therefore requested to introduce themselves and their affiliations. The moderator will also determine if follow-up questions can still be accommodated or not. Finally, after the webinar, participants are enjoined to accomplish an evaluation form. The link for the said form will be posted on the chat feature of the Zoom meeting and the comment section of the YouTube streaming. So how about for the flow of our program? So we are now currently in the preliminaries and then later we are going to proceed to the talk or with the talk of our guest speaker. Now immediately after the talk, we are going to have a five minute break to give you time to think and type your questions. Now, after the break, we are going to proceed with the 20 minute open forum. And then we close with the awarding of certificate of appreciation, of course, to our guest speaker. Now, of course, according to our program flow, in the next 40 minutes, we are going to know the answer to the question Do benefits of vaccines really far outweigh the risks of COVID 19? from someone who has published numerous journal articles has acquired industrial, technical, and clinical study experiences, and has performed scientific presentations, all of which in the field of medical science. In addition, she also finished her doctoral degree in medical science at Yonsei University, Wonju College of Medicine in South Korea on February the year 2016. Everyone, let us all welcome our guest speaker, Professor Maria Easter Joy Sao. Ah, good afternoon, everyone. So let me share my screen. Okay, can you all see my screen now? Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Noel. So I'm grateful for this opportunity and the inv invitation of our CS Dean, Ma'am Dimfa Javier, to share my thoughts on COVID-19 vaccine, which is a very, very controversial, controversial and also timely topic nowadays. So uh, most of the people are still ambivalent or in, indecisive of whether or not they, they wanted to take the COVID-19 vaccine or not. So, so I hope at the end of this presentation, I would be able to present you the benefits and maybe you can weigh in on your own and then you can decide on your own with your freedom if you would like to take the COVID-19 vaccine or not. Okay. So today, uh, I, I have the simple flow. It's a pretty a uh, straightforward um, flow of my presentation. So we'll be answering questions such as the what are the updates on, on COVID-19 status nowadays and all that fuss um, or issues that has been um, roaming around and then what are vaccines? Are they really safe or effective? Or can we really take that vaccine? Or are you eligible for that vaccine? Or what is the 
COVID-19 immunity. Why is it important? And of course, most importantly, the risk and benefits of COVID-19 vaccine. And lastly is my thoughts on those. Okay, so let's start with the status. So here I made um, the status uh, yesterday, but I think uh, the update updated version is now out today. So it's still um, ballpoint figure. So I'm sure you have heard that the last few weeks, the numbers of cases of COVID-19 have increased or spiked. Um, and it has been very alarming because uh, for the past few weeks, we have almost 10,000 cases every day. And I think yesterday we hit 11,000 cases. Oops. Okay, so, um, and maybe uh, around, maybe a few more weeks will we hit 1 million already. So it's very alarming and um, surprising also for us. So, uh, but the good thing is we have the get ball rolling on our vaccination program. So we have 1.26 million uh, vaccination or doses given to the Filipinos and um, only 162,000 of those are fully vaccinated. So maybe the rest is just for one dose only and they, they are about to get the second dose of it. And it's about 0.1% only of the population that has been fully vaccinated compared to the world record of 2.6%. So here is a graph of the percent of the population with at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. So the 1.26 million is up to here. So this is the Philippines, this is Asia, and then this is the world. So we might have started late, but we are keeping the ball rolling on the vaccination program and efforts done by our government. So before we start, let's um, have a review or maybe we have forgotten already and stop reading maybe updates on coronavirus. So coronavirus or COVID-19 is an infection illness, as you all know, caused by the SARS-CoV-2 or the, the severe uh, acute syndrome uh, coronavirus 2. So it is important, um, as we know, the uh, as we will be talking about the vaccine today, it's important to know the structure of this human coronavirus. So this SARS-CoV-2 virus has a host membrane-derived lipid um, bilayer encapsulating uh, the helical capsid of the viral RNA. So here you can see different proteins. So this is the spike or S protein, and then the nucleocapsid, and then we have a glycoprotein membrane here, and then the envelope is also envelope protein, and then we have the DNA or RNA viral genome. Okay, so when you take a look at this in the microscope or electron microscope, you can um, see their structure that, especially the protrudings here, that uh, it maybe look like a, a, a crown. So that's why it was coined and named as a coronavirus. So to understand more on the COVID-19 vaccines and how it works, it helps us to first look on our bodies or, or our system or how do we fight um, this um, germs or this um, different uh, pathogens. So when, like for example, when bacteria or a virus such as uh, coronavirus invade our bodies, so they attack and multiply and the invasive or the invasive um, uh, method or mechanism of it is called the infection. So that's what it calls illness. So our immune system uses several tools to fight the infection. So we have our blood or our cells, we have our blood cells, the red blood cells, which carry the oxygen, of course, and then the tissue to the organs, so that's just a review. And then the white blood cells are the immune cells, you have different kinds of those. So there are different uh, types of um, immune cells that fight um, the infections in different ways as well. So for example, for this figure, you can see the macrophages or the white blood cells that swallow up or digest, I think uh, it's a bacteria and then the dead or lying cells. So the macrophages leave behind, behind the parts of the invading um, bacteria or maybe virus. And then it's called the living uh, invading, um, what's that? The material will be called the antigen. So the body identifies that antigens and as uh, dangerous are um, the, the one that stimulates the antibody to attack them. So next is we have the B cell and T cell. So what are those? So they are also defensive uh, immune cells. So they 
produce antibodies, they attack the pieces of the uh, viruses or maybe the bacteria left behind by the macrophages. So the T cells, uh, on the other hand, is another type of defensive um, uh, white blood cells that attack the cells in the body that has been already been infected. So these are very important in the vaccine um, concept. So the immune system protects the host from invading uh, pathogens through, of course, two types of immune um, uh, system or in immune system, which is the innate and adaptive immunity. So the innate uh, immunity here, as you can see, so it recognizes the pathogens and then it just activates the cell and inflammation right away. So it's very quick, it's very nonspecific, and then it removes the infectious cells, such as the macrophage that engulfs the bacteria. So the adaptive, on the other hand, um, takes time. So it takes days. So it's a long term, more specific, and it's long lived, and it's the basis for all vaccine. So the innate and adaptive response of this coronavirus, um, as you can see here, is um, has different army of immune cells. So for the innate uh, immunity, we have the neutrophils, the macrophages, or the monocytes, and then the dendritic cells, which produces different uh, cytokines, such as um, interferons. And then also we have adaptive immunity, which has naive T cells or naive B cells that activates the different T cells and then produces cascading events that can produce such uh, uh, antibodies and then other chemicals that signals our body to action. So the, for the uh, interaction of the coronavirus and immune system, basically it, it just produces a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So what happens when we uh, have a, a lot of pro-inflammatory uh, cytokines? So there will be an imbalance of the pro-inflammatory and then the anti-inflammatory cytokines that would cause the system haywire. So, so it suppresses the uh, TNF alpha or also the interferon uh, production here as well. And also um, it causes what you call this cytokine store. So this cytokine store, this process leads to lung immunopathology. That's why uh, that's why our, the lungs, which is the target um, of the cells, um, it's spe the specific um, signalings are activated and exacerbate that lung injury in the lungs. So the CTL or the cytotoxic T cells here uh, contributes to the virus clearance of lysis. So they clean it, uh, they kill all the infected cells. And then the B cells here are produce, uh, they produce the virus specific antibodies and then neutralizes the viruses. So this one I'll just show in brief. So there's, this is a schematic structural um, proteins of the SARS-CoV-2 SARS SARS -CoV variant. So we have here, I already discussed a while ago, we have several proteins, surface proteins, and also the one inside. So here we'll focus on this one, the S protein, which is the spike protein. So as you can see here, if you um, zoom in or um, make a figure in a software, you can see uh, there's a red color here. This is the uh, receptor binding domain or RDD. So there are different kinds of SARS-CoV-2 vaccine candidates um, in the market or that, that has been studied. So uh, these are, this can be from inactivated uh, virus vaccines such as yung mga, I think yung, yung Sinovac natin is from inactivated virus. So what they do, they grow, i sorry, they grow on cells. Can you see it? They grow on the cells that inactivated and then they, they chemically inactivate the the virus. So, like the ver of course they the virus need the host cell, which is sometimes in the culture like vera cells. Then they um, put some chemicals to make it inactivated. And then we have here the live one, live an attenuated vaccines. Um, they are genetically weakened versions of the va the virus, but this is a little bit dangerous to use, I think. The next is the recombinant protein vaccines based on their spike protein. So most of this are protein or S, S protein based uh, vaccines. So here we have the RBD, the red one here. So the re receptor binding domain. And then next is the VLP or the virus like particles. Here you can see they are almost the same, but it doesn't have 
genome, oh, but we have the S spikes only. So another um, type is a replication incompetent vector vaccine that cannot propagate in the cells in the vaccine um, vaccinated individual, but expresses the spike uh, protein inside. So here, the S protein is located inside the host cell. And the next is almost similar, but this is um, uh, replication competent. Uh, they can propagate to some extent in the cells, but the vaccinated individual and then they express the S protein from within as well. So it, the difference is just they can all, they can um, live inside the um, individual or the, the vaccinated individual. And then next is inactivated virus vector that uh, display the spike protein on the surface and carry the copies of the spike protein on the surface by, but they have chemically uh, inactivated here. So they also have the S uh, protein genes here, but they are inactivated. And then next we have uh, DNA uh, vaccines consist of plasmids, DNA um, encoding the spike gene under a mammalian promoter gene. So RNA vaccine, which are you know, two common at you know, Moderna and Pfizer, so they are with lipid um, nanoparticles. So it consists of RNA encoding and S protein that are typically packaged. It was a lipid nanoparticle. So somehow it it is a delivery. It has a delivery function or packaging fun function. So now let's move on to um, the vaccine. So what are really vaccines? So vaccines have saved tens of millions of lives in the past century. Yet many countries, like nowadays, like US, and um, have health experts that identify the threat towards this vaccine hesitancy. So many people are very hesitant to take vaccine and an increasing refusal of the use of vaccine has become um, the one of the 10 world threat in 2009. So it's uh, one of the 10 threats of global health in 2009 uh, as of WHO. So a sample case of this was last year in uh, in Brooklyn, USA, so there is a Jewish community there that um, flew or distributed flyers and then wrongly claims that, that there is a link between vaccine and autism. So the same community has been the center of one of the largest outbreaks of missiles in the US in decades. So um, this, that's just some of the cases um, in the US that, uh, that shows evidence of um, the hesitance of the people in the area, so in the community. So next now, so how do they work? So here, for example, the, the last example we have a while ago is the RNA vaccine. So usually they take part of the virus genetic code or RNA, nya, and then uh, it tells the cells uh, what to build and then coat them with the lipid, yung nanoparticle lipid that acts as is, um, parang packaging to enter the body cells. And then the vaccine enters the cells and tells them to produce a lot of, or to produce the corona spike protein. And then from that on, then on it prompts the immune system to produce antibodies and activate the T cells and destroy the infected cells. So uh, if the patient encounters uh, coronavirus, so the antibody and the T cells are triggered to fight that virus. So that's how it works. So this one, I'm not sure if you can see clearly. Anyway, it's uh, it's almost the same. So it's just portraying, of course, the the structure here of the uh, viral structure and then infected by the binding of the S protein and also the host receptor, which is the ACE2 receptor. So of course, it's um, a transmission pathway is through the aerosol or the droplets, in, and then it goes into our lungs, and then the identification of um, it's true like close contacts. And then here we have here, as I said earlier, so we have here the potential vaccine that are already somehow clinically uh, tested, or they already have their clinical trials. So we have. Um, the live attenuated, which is a little bit dangerous and sketchy. So we have the inactivated, such as um, the Sinovac. And then we have here the subunit vaccine that targets the S protein. 
Uh, also, another one um, is the VLP or the vaccine-like particles base, which is also uh, targeting S protein and then the RNA base for the Moderna, Moderna and then Pfizer. And then we have DNA base as well and then the vector base as well. So uh, here, any one of you have been vaccinated since like birth? Like they have, um, do you have, do you already have a missiles vaccine already? Or pertrusis? So you remember maybe uh, in school or maybe when, when you have a younger sister or brother. So um, they have already a program that, that um, vaccinated all the children. So for smallpox, diphtheria, so there's a package for that. So as you can see here, um, the cases from the 20th century and also the reported cases now and also the the percentage decrease is almost 100 so it's like 99 92 98 99 so with that uh, said so th it has decreased over time so the cases of uh, mumps measles and rubella with the uh, respect with the vaccines that has been vaccine programs that has been implemented in the area. So it just shows that uh, infection diseases have significantly reduced the disease per percentages. So these are just some of the examples. There are a lot more of this. So um, next is how does this vaccine develop? So in terms of an industry or pharmaceutical company, so vaccine, vaccines are being developed uh, with this step. So we have the research um, Stages. We have the in vitro, in vivo, and then preclinical testing. And then we have the uh, phases one, two, three of uh, clinical development. And then we have the transfer process to manufacture. And it usually takes around 15 years or more. Okay. So, pinakamabilis siguro. It depends. So, it depends on the um, disease that you are also targeting. So, every disease is also unique in developing this timeline for uh, developing the vaccine. So here, um, it's very controversial, right? Like, how does it, like, we just had the coronavirus last year. So how did they develop that quick? So, because we, we just had a, a vaccination program last month, right? So like what is what did they do? So the traditional method, as I discussed earlier, they have the in vitro studies. They studied um, in the cells, and then then they move on with the study in the animals, and then after that, um, that exploratory um, experiments, uh, they will apply this IND, which is the investigatory. A uh, new drug, so that they can proceed to the clinical trial. So the clinical trial after the clinical trials, phase one, two, and three. So phase one usually, that's the time when they check the, um, like they 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 will check the efficacy, the safety in a small sample sampling size, and then it will just increase um, the sampling size as it goes on. So here you can see here um, in the SARS-CoV-2, they have eliminated already the um, the in vitro studies or the um, initial studies, but it's not completely in, eliminated or skipped. It was not skipped, but um, it has already been studied. So it has accelerated. So the development of SARS-CoV-2 has been accelerated because the knowledge gained from the initial development of the MERS or the other coronaviruses, such as MERS-CoV and then the SARS-CoV, uh, the discovery phase was omitted because it has all, um, it has been studied. So MERS-CoV, SARS-CoV has uh, around 80% similarity um, in the structure. So existing process were adopted and then the phase one, phase two, trial were start started and then phase three. So all the bureaucracy in the IRB, um, it's, it, it usually takes a, a long time in, in developing a protocol and submission and then you have to rebuttal and all that. Then you have a lot of um, yeah, submission to different authorities in 
submitting this clinical trial and also for the manufacturing. So for stage three after that, um, in the meantime, while the vaccine producers have been started, like the phase two or three, they already starting to, to do the manufacturing company. So somehow they already strategize on a way how to speed things up, okay? So also the regulatory affairs, uh, there's not much bureaucracy and all the fundings and support was given to them because uh, they have given, um, because of the emergency that we have right now, which is the pandemic. So the exact pathway of which these vaccine ca candidates will be licensed, for example, those with initial emergency use authority. So this emergency use authorization, um, has been given to some of the vaccine um, holder company already, but not yet to all. So of course, um, safety is the priority in all uh, the phases. So as you can see again, so here um, in the clinical phases or in the, the drug discovery, mostly it's just of course cells lang naman and then uh, animals, but it, it's um, it's where they check this, um, the doses, the different um, cytotoxicity and all that. So for phase one, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, small groups lang evaluate the safety, immune effects, and then tolerance of different doses. So those dependent experiments and different um, immune um, parameters. And then phase two, it's a little bit larger. It confirms the formulation. So if there are, if you need like an adjuvant to boost the effect, they, they will um, maybe revise the formulation and, and then identify the need of um, the interval between each of the dose. That's why uh, we have now like two doses for um, some of our vaccines. So phase three will evaluate the protection given to the thousands and thousands of volunteers who are risk uh, who are at risk from the disease in question so clinical trials may take years but um, here they have done it uh, simultaneously somehow so it has um, they have strategized on a way to speed things up so here as you can see um, the one that are available this is from doh data so we have the pfizer oxford for uh, the AstraZeneca, Sinovac, and Gamelia. They're already um, clear with the preclinical, the phase one, phase two, phase three. And then this three, actually they have approved uh, FDA or actually they have EA, uh, the emergency use authorization. That's why they have, they're automatically approved by the FDA. And then we have uh, Philippine FDA approval for these four um, vaccines already. So let's move on with the COVID-19 immunity. Do I still have time? Okay. Anyway, so for the natural immunity, or we call it the infection-induced immunity, of course, pag na hawa or naging positive ka, so you're already somehow immune, as you can say. But then um, knowing the immune response of the COVID-19 is the capability or this is very important to solve our pandemic crisis or problem nowadays. So there are a lot of um, parameters to check. So indicators whether a person has antibody in the blood. So as you can remember, like um, the convalescence therapy, like they check uh, if you still have the antibodies and also um, uh, other parameters that they can check are also memory B cell or T cells and also yung IG, IgG, IgA, IgM. And a few of the memory T cells are still there, but usually uh, it, these are detectable for over uh, like months after the infection. So the best marker is the neutralizing antibody so that uh, can prevent the viral entry into the cell. So um, that's why uh, the existing of this antibody does not really predict um, the presence of P or T cells, pero the individuals differ in the quantity or quality of the effectivity in prevention of the infection. That's why sometimes meron pa other people that has uh, reinfection. So other people's produce antibodies uh, can be protected from the disease, but they're, they're still carriers and they can still infect others. So it's very 
complicated um, sometimes because because it's very new, so uh, we're still figuring things out of its characteristics and all that. But um, the re reinfection depends on the immunity of the person as well. So it derives from the first infection of the exposure and then the social environment and and all that. So let's just make this quick. And then vaccine induced immunity, as I already discussed a while ago. So it's important to attain immunity by the virus by stimulating an immune re response of foreign body. So most of the viruses or the vaccines that are available now targets the S protein. So which is the um, normally the one that is utilized to invade the human cells. So like for example, yung, um, yung mRNA natin sa Pfizer and Moderna. And then for viral vector, uh, AstraZeneca and J and J, Johnson and Johnson. And then we have the Sinovac, which is the inactivated virus. And then we have the Novovax na I think it will be approved very, very soon. And then it will come maybe by June. So protein sub uh, unit naman siya. So this one I already somehow uh, discussed earlier. So now um, what's a good thing is if you have both or we have long-term immunity and vaccine. So of course the adaptive immune response involves, uh, as I tell earlier, yung T cells and B cells. So it makes high specificity uh, antibodies to stop the virus uh, getting into the cells and then it can help stimulate the B cells and kill the uh, infected cells. So this cell remember, so they have memory as well. So they remember the virus and remain the body. That's why it's called the immune memory. So if you encounter the real virus in the future, the immune system will respond faster and uh, effectively to prevent this infection. So, so far, this is what the data show, but I think this is from March pa, nung last kong chinek. So, uh, we have Pfizer, uh, like all of this, Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Gamalaya, Sinovac, J&J, &J, Novovac, Sinopharm. Uh, except for J&J, &J, uh, most of them are two doses, but this one AstraZeneca for it. So because of the issues nowadays on the blood clot, so they have suggested to um, maybe lower the dose or maybe just one dose is enough. So they're still um, like um, in in a gray area nowadays. So uh, of course they're all like, they have different numbers here. They have 95%. Um, 94% and then AstraZeneca is 62 to 90. Uh, Gamalaya is 91% and Sinovac, uh, it dep uh, this one, uh, Sinovac has 50 to 90%. So there uh, later, I, there, I, there's another figure where, because um, it depends on their sampling size and sampling area as well. So it's actually incomparable in terms of that, but this is for sure. So for the J&J, &J, so for different variants, so we have, like nowadays we have different variants, right? So somehow it's still effective, but it has lowered it, its um, uh, eff effectivity or preventing the symptoms or the clinical disease. So anyway, but it's still effective. So it, uh, most of them, naman, it's 100% um, prevent the Severe, severity of the disease, but uh, no, no um, evidence yet for herd immunity. And then for the FDA, PH approval, medyo matagal, especially for the Philippines. So, but we do have the emergency use authority from Pfizer, AstraZeneca, and then Sinovac. So this one also, this one is important, the uh, temperature, because um, as you can see, Moderna needs negative 20. So it's very uh, critical, like the temperature is very critical. So um, so we also, I'm not sure, we cannot guarantee also, like um, although um, protocols or SOPs has been in place, but yeah, you, you can take note also of the temperature or storage instructions for that. Next is herd immunity. So how do we attain this herd immunity? So as you can see here in the, fi the figure, so this one, figure A and figure B. So this one has a very few people who had 
you who are vaccinated, but then um, the person that is infected has spreads very fast. And then another one, another case is a lot of people has been vaccinated, but then the disease, disease can spread very fast. So why is that? So herd immunity is attained when transmission of the virus within a population is considerably lessened due to the high per percentage of the individual who develop the immunity. So um, in concept, so if enough people have become um, immune, the SARS-CoV-2 at the low or undetectable levels already, somehow parang they cannot somehow attack or somehow, yeah, that's how the vaccine protected um, the individual also from the virus. So basically, uh, the important aspect of this Im herd immunity is that the immune response decreases the infection and also the transmission. And that is something that is long lasting. So yeah, this is just another uh, figure from another paper in nature. So let's move on now to the main topic, which is the risk and benefits. So who are eligible but to get the vaccine? So most people are able to get um, the vaccine, but of course you need to take or to bear in mind um, your condition as well. So hindi naman basta-basta, okay, uh, wala ka na palang spleen, pero wala ka na palang immune, uh, your immune response are really very, very low. So um, it would not take effect. So uh, there are people who should not uh, get uh, the vaccine, such as, for example, you have allergic reactions or that can cause like anaphylaxis. So there are several cases of this already. So um, also yung ingredient, like you have, um, uh, what's this, uh, allergy, for example, for this vaccine component. So you have to also know what are the vaccine components so that you know if you are allergic pala, for example, for polysorbate. And then for those younger than 16 years of age, um, they also have somehow lower immunity. And then people currently isolating or experiencing symptoms of COVID-19, of course, so that you cannot um, somehow uh, spread it. So you need to finish first the isolation and um, uh, the primary symptoms must be resolved. So. Others are also that this one, um, they are people who may get the vaccine after considerable, are considering risk and uh, benefits and also consulting with their healthcare provider. So, of course, always uh, also seek advice to your doctor or to your physician. So, for example, you have autoimmune disease or you have um, atopic dermatitis or like an, any allergic reaction, and then uh, this one's very important. You may mga um, heparin or nag inject ng heparin or something like that. And then, um, yeah, and then pregnant women as well. So we, there's no um, enough evidence for this uh, at this time. So people also with certain immune compromising conditions, breastfeeding women, and then uh, people on anticoagulants. So this is very important for the blood blood issue uh, nowadays. So this one, I'm not sure if you can see. Um, oh yeah, this one, uh, like for the Pfizer, um, I already told you Pfizer, uh, like all of them, two doses. That's why our count for our vaccinations is very low. It's just 162,000 because most of them just got their uh, first dose palang and then storage condition. Ang very critical here is this Pfizer. Uh, and then I think, is it negative? Yeah, yeah Pfizer. And then others. And then Janssen also negative 20. But it can be used for um, also room temp or chill, chiller. So here, uh, there are these are the common side effects or adverse effects. So take note that side effects and adverse effects are different. So uh, adverse effects are something that is mm, very dangerous and um, it persists longer. So, of, uh, like, for example, 
um like the blood clot and it can cause like damage also to to your to your organs or your system so here you have um like different um uh, reactions but normal vaccination reaction it's normal to have a certain reaction for this um vaccination there may be like redness or swelling especially on the injection site sometimes fatigue fever so this one i i personally um felt this kahit hindi sa uh, coronavirus like for example like the simple flu virus like every year i take that and then I get some some kind some sort of reaction. So these are normal because that means that the vaccine is working in your body because it stimulates the immune system and the body forms the antibodies um, against the infection. So it's not uh, remember it's not a live it's not the live virus that that are that you are ingesting in or that they are injecting to you. So it's all inactivated, and then it's all. Um, somehow genetically modified um, for our protection. So here, I just mentioned a while ago, so most common uh, are yeah, fatigue, headache, muscle aches, fever, chills. So these are some of the side effects, but others like the adverse effects. So like, um, what else? So these are actually just side effects. Yeah, mostly are just side effects, but I think I'm not sure if it's here like the blood clot and then the other like maybe yeah you can uh, just check the doh page on um like other like packs so you should not check on other like sites or not legit so the risk of blood clot so what would be the connection between the blood clot and vaccine so this is a very um controversial topic nowadays so with low levels of platelets uh, usually na kita nila yon na they have this the one the people who had vaccine has low level of platelets tau and then there's a blood coagulation that this is called the uh, uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia so uh, this was caused when the um, like heparin binds to uh, platelet um, there's a factor platelet factor four and then uh, they they that one produce the symptoms of yeah, the blood clotting but somehow it has been um seen also like uh, for covid infection without the vaccine so it has been somehow found that there are cases with blood clot with um covid infection so also if you are smoking there's a percentage of 0.18% that you can have blood clots or the risk of blood clots. And then if you, you're taking breast control as well, you have 0.4 or 0.05%. But nowadays, uh, it's very controversial because there's a lot of cases uh, from AstraZeneca. And I heard also from J&J and uh, other vaccines as well. So they're very, um, um, of course, they're very, uh, alarm, especially like some of the countries already withdrawn all their AstraZeneca um, orders, like for example, in Denmark. So just for the sake of the safety of their uh, citizens. So again, so the what happened there is there's this um, vaccine, so maybe this 0.004%. If you can see them, it's very low compared to the, if you're not taking the vaccine or your smoking or birth control pill and then um, this uh, vaccine uh, vaccine induced immune thrombotic uh, thrombocytopenia may study sila sa germany uh, norway and austria they said that um, alternatively these antibodies that may already be present in the patients and then the vaccine may just boost them these antibodies and then many healthy if you're healthy kasi um what it does is that um healthy people harbor yung antibodies against um this platelet uh factor for or pf4 but they are kept checked by an immune mechanism called the uh, peripheral tolerance so maybe these people who have clots have um hindi okay yung peripheral tolerance nila or yung immune mechanism nila on this. 
So when you get vaccinated, sometimes the mechanism of this peripheral tolerance get disrupted as well. So when that happens, um, yeah, does that unleash the autoimmune syndromes that can predispose you to have that heparin-induced thrombocytopenia? So, but anyways, the the data shows naman here na it's not um, there are people who died, but somehow, like here, 0.7 who died in a million, so 0.007 percent. So there are also people who died of blood clot with other conditions as well, which are higher path. Okay, so now let's move on to the benefits of the COVID-19 vaccine. So the benefits are actually, you can also say that this is our potential endpoints or uh, this is how you consider that the vaccines are efficient or efficacious against COVID-19. So here, if the patient or it, if it prevented the infection, number one. Number two, if it prevented the disease. Number three, if they prevented the hospitalization. And then number four, if it prevented the um, severity or yung pagpunta mo sa in, uh, ICU, intensive care unit admission. Number five is for to prevent death or yung mortality. And then yung number six is to prevent um, transmission, which is very, very important to stop the spread of the infection. So for personal uh, benefits, uh, when you get, or when, once you, you have been fully vaccinated, so you can now go home uh, or fully, um, you can somehow um, feel, uh, feel free to go around, to go in, in, um, in one city to another and then travel domestically without quarantining or travel uh, internationally as well. But then you still need to um, be careful So because there are not enough data on the transmissibility or effects of this virus and the transmissibility or infection. So you can also still be careful on like, for example, if you're in a closed area, you still have to wear your mask as if, if possible and then um, not attend like very big uh, gatherings as well just to be, uh, you know, responsible and safe. So let's uh, take the example for the Israel experience. So Israel is one of the country that um, first did the trial and also the vaccination. So from, is it the same? Yeah, from, I think, yeah, from January to February. So they have a percentage of change of like negative 53%. So uh, a lot of the confirmed cases has lowered and also the hospitalization as well has lowered significantly as well as the severe illness. So they are the one who have lightened the lockdown as early as possible. And then next is the COVID infections among uh, vaccinated uh, people in Israel. So as you can, See, I'm not sure if you can see. So only six per 10,000 vaccinated people were infected with COVID-19. So you can see how it decreases the, um, the cases as soon as they finish their second dosage of um, vaccine. So take note that, it, uh, that the effect would take only a week or two after the second dose. Okay, so a more bigger picture. So it does not only um, have um, effects on your personal benefits, but also in a big picture as well. So of course, in your health, as I mentioned earlier, um, you prevent the, the infection, you prevent the hospitalization, et cetera, et cetera. But also you also um, uh, say or like, contribute to the economy, okay? So productivity of the uh, economy and then the cost of everything. So also a social and mental also, it's um, a big part of the impact of, of vaccines as we have uh, experienced it now. So let's see, it's almost done. So um, the benefits of course, uh, as um, a summary is 
to end, of course, the pandemic, to save the economy, and then to build the herd immunity. And lastly is to prevent um, the variants. So there's also a study that uh, the, there are different variants because they mutate and mutate because they trans, uh, there's a lot of transmission going on. But then if you are vaccinated, then we will be able to prevent the different variants. And then another one I just added here. So of course we know that it has been derived somehow or originated from some kind of animal host or maybe bat or some sort of uh, other mammals. And then uh, they also, a uh, recent study says also that they might be also helpful for the next um, maybe outbreak or pandemic that will become. So this vaccine may also help us also to combat the future um, maybe outbreak or pandemic. We'll never know. So lastly, just my thought. So everyone has a responsibility on protecting ourselves. Also, not only ourselves, we're, all no, we're not only thinking of ourselves, but also uh, the people around us. So everyone has to do their part and get vaccinated to get back to normal. Like, but then you need to check your doctor or you need to check your condition. So you have your own free will to know your body, to know yourself. It will still be your own decision if you would like to take your vaccines or not. So, but as I said earlier, vaccines are the fastest way to control this current pandemic that we're going on. So in sorting the gradual sliding curve of the risk and the benefit balance, there's no sudden point at which the vaccine becomes safe or unsafe. For sure, it's not 100%, um, it's not perfect 100%, everyone can be protected. But now the numbers suggest that even for the young people, the vaccine is a net benefit of the vast majority. And the uh, getting the va getting vaccinated also provides a protection not only to yourself but also to other people. So, and also not only to your own health but in the economy and in the social situation as well. So, for the meantime, let's do our part and um, let's do like the small um, things that we can do, uh, like wearing masks, proper hygiene, and observing social distancing. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Maybe. I can take in um, some questions later. So thank you so much, Professor Saho, for this very timely lecture as we are currently in the massive rollout of vaccines. Again, thank you so much, Professor Saho. So again, based on our program flow, we are going to have a three-minute break. Again, to give you time to think and type your questions in the Q&A portion or rather in the Q&A feature for our Zoom participants, whereas for those viewing this live via YouTube to post their questions in the comment section. So thank you and see you again later.
Hello, and we are back. So let us now proceed to our open forum and answer some of your questions sent earlier. Okay. So we have our first question here, ma'am, um, from an anonymous person. So her question or his question is, may we ask po what is immunity escape and should we worry about it? Um, ma'am? You are muted, po. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure if immunity escape is also the antigenic escape. So uh, usually the antigenic escape, okay, is um, it's it's actually possible that it will be it happen because sometimes um, our immune system, like varies and are unable to. Um, respond or respond to the agent or to the pathogens already. So that that's very timely now because we have a lot of um, mutations and variants. So um, and I haven't really um, dig deep in, in this um, topic, but it's it's one of the major problems I think of the future or um maybe uh the next uh, outbreak or infectious disease um that will happen but this uh antigenic shift or antigenic escape um is uh i think there there are a lot of studies has been that has been um ongoing nowadays and also um for the mutation so honestly like immune system is a bit complex um kind of stuff it's not a straightforward um like answer or theory somehow uh you need to get like different or a lot of somehow like um samples or like data that would really um conclude like your conclusions I hope I hope you I answer your question. But anyways, uh, I'll get back to you if I, I get more information on that. Thank you, thank you, Professor Saho. We also have another question, anonymous from an anonymous person. So, is there a best vaccine to use? Po, thank you, ma'am. Okay, so nowadays, like for, like we're um, in the parang developing country and we are somehow starting the the vaccination program we can't really actually choose which which um vaccine is for us but then it depends also like um for the availability of the vaccine so some of the vaccines that we have right now are um i think donated or distributed um well by different distributing uh, vaccine distributors like they ensure that everyone must get a vaccine but then again you need also to to choose uh, or, or to know your conditions are or do you have any comorbidities one and then uh, how old are you are you compromised um, or immunocompromised or um, maybe um, some other conditions that you have. So you need to take note of that and then also check the data. So everything naman, they have, um, they published data on like um, CDC. Uh, yeah, the CDC are uh, pinaka parang somehow they get the data there. CDC, WHO, uh, they have, um, yeah, the DHO here in the Philippines as well but yeah you need to check also you in, in conditions more but so far i think sinovac they they said it's because it's it's uh, from inactivated um the virus so they said they there's like a uh, base from the data very minimal um somehow side effects but we'll never know about um yung other somehow long-term effects nga. Thank you for that, ma'am or Professor Saho. So before we continue to the next question, let me 
remind again or let me notify our attendees or to our participants that the link for our evaluation form has been posted already in the chat box for our Zoom participants. Whereas for those viewing us live via YouTube, it has been posted already in the comment section. Now, let us promise you that in answering the question or rather the evaluation form, it will take you less than three minutes and that your response will surely help us in our preparations in our future webinars. Also, in filling out this evaluation form, this will credit you a certificate of participation in this event. And so please check, kindly check the spelling of your name while filling this out or while filling out the form. Okay, thank you once again. So let us continue now to our next question. For our third question, again, it's from an anonymous person. So thank you so much for the insightful talk, Professor Saho. My question is, what are the implications of the accelerated development of COVID-19 vaccine to future vaccines? Okay, that's very good. But um, as I said earlier, so different uh, diseases or different maybe pathogens can be can have like different developmental timeline. So nowadays, since uh, the situation um, and then the technology that is available, it has really made us possible to to speed things up in developing this vaccine but i think uh if we have this we need to factor in funding we need to factor in bureaucracy we need to factor in um yeah the support of the higher ups and then yeah and then the situation as well so now because we are in a, an emergency state of emergency so everything was made possible through the technology, through the through our um, hardworking scientists, and also um, yeah, through like all the efforts of the different organization that has um, give everything to to make this possible. But again, um, always um, also do your own research. So. I think it's possible, but um, with the help of or support of uh, the other um, organizations as well. Thank you, ma'am. So again, we have another message. Thank you, ma'am, for the informative talk. Could a person still be infected even after getting enough doses of vaccine? Yeah, so there are also um, cases um, that you can still be infected. So it depends again uh, on your system, on your body system, and how you respond to the vaccine as well. Somehow it will, um, the data nowadays, it's not 100%. So we're still, they are still doing um, the research. And like, um, like for me, I'm, I'm, I'm somehow biased or scientifically biased because I am a researcher, I am uh, a scientist, but then I, I just put the trust in them, their integrity in doing science. And then um, like for, for the infectious, um, like they have some sort of um, protection maybe for the severity um, of the disease and all that and the preventing hospitalization and maybe um, ICU um, admission, but then you can still, it's still probable or it's still possible to be, to get infected uh, depending on your immune response. So uh, immune system is a little bit tricky or um, a little bit something like cancers. Uh, I have this idea that, that actually immune system can also be personalized somehow so as you know, like different people or different individual has a unique response to different um, like pathogens or different attacks or something like that. So I think like for the reinfection, it could, it's possible. So it depends on, on your um, uh, immune response. Thank you, ma'am. So again, we have another message from Ms. Anne Claire Haralde. Good afternoon, Paul. Thank you for that very timely talk. 
many people become careless and complacent after getting fully vaccinated. But we know that these vaccines do not ensure 100% protection against the virus. So how do we advise people to still take caution despite getting fully vaccinated? Okay, so yes, and um, take note that the number of people who are vaccinated is just 0.1%. So fully vaccinated is around 0.1% of our population. So it doesn't mean, as, as he said, she said, um, it doesn't mean we have a 100% protection. So I think um, let's just be fully res responsible and of course be fully aware that even though we are vaccinated, we, sh we still need to use um, precautions and follow. Of course, we have restrictions, our LGU rules, we should follow, we'd still follow um, the restrictions, um, uh, like, uh, what's that, like going in and out of um, like uh, different provinces and all that. So you can still be, um, you can still spread the virus, um, but then you are protected somehow with your own, but then let's think of the other people as well. Thank you, ma'am. So again, we have another question. Why are there different kinds of COVID vaccines? Pfizer, AstraZeneca, can't there be just one unified vaccine that will provide full immunity against the virus? Okay. Actually, uh, ang pinaka goal ngayon ng mga scientists and researchers, especially mga virologists, is to have that pan, uh, what's that, like, um, like pan virus, what do you call that? It's like um, virus for uh, parang vaccine for all. But then again, um, we have different ways to kill a cat, or we have a different ways to attack the virus. So as as I said earlier, the structure, um, most of them really focused on the S protein or the spike protein. But then uh, you can also yeah, try other ways because there's um, we, we still actually don't know the specific um, parang action niya or which one is most effective or not because there are different factors then in, in their clinical testing and their um, the, the places where they did the clinical testing and their sampling size and all that. So they have, of course, there's also um, the money or the economic. <laughs> Um, factor that you need to consider. So there's um, also the demand. So the global demand is too much. So one company or pharmaceutical company cannot really take all in. And in 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 manufacturing a vaccine, it's not it's not cheap. It's it's very 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 expensive. That's why like like um, the and biotech and uh, Pfizer, so they uh, they somehow some of them have merged already, and then um, they got different funds from different people, organizations, and from the government as well. So it's not easy to just have one um, way or one method to kill a cat or to kill or to at uh, to combat. Um, this pandemic. Thank you, ma'am. So I think, ma'am, we also have another great question. Uh, kudos po sa presentation. I had COVID last month. If I get vaccine now, will it result into a stronger immune response? Or is there a possibility for me to acquire COVID-19 again? Mm, I'm not really sure if we, uh, but if you have both that uh, vaccine-induced protection and also that uh, natural immunity or the infection-induced immunity, uh, it will somehow like give you a strong somehow protection um, theoretically. But then again, we're still not sure um, for the new like mutants or like the new variant variants that are coming. So, but it's very less likely that you would be infected again. I, I just 
um, somehow, in my opinion, you're very less likely to be um, to have somehow or get infected. But you um, you might be still be a spreader, but then you will not have somehow like the symptoms or the severity um, of the disease. Thank you for the answer, ma'am. So we have another question from Jemaya Rabena. Good afternoon. Statistically in the Philippines, do we already have a data that show the effectivity of getting vaccinated? Wouldn't it be better if we concentrate the rollout of vaccines in a particular place, ma'am? Your thoughts, Paul. Thank you so much. Mm, is it because of the herd immunity? I, the concept of... Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's it's possible maybe to focus on on one area, just like what happened. I think maybe in New York or some areas in Italy. But um, the distribution. So we have this um regulating. Or they have this regulating organization that manage the distribution equally to each and every parang citizen or part of the country. So somehow um, they are responsible that everyone must get uh, or distributed um, yung vaccine equally and well, even sa, um, especially sa mga developing countries. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. So again, we, we have another question. Uh, may I know, Po, why a lot of countries, including the Philippines, do not advise the use of the Sinovac vaccine among those under 18? Are there any health effects, Po, only felt by those under 18? Tapos meron pa po siyang binagdag na um, additional info. I am 17, Po, kasi, but I am turning 18 this month. Even though I am turning 18, I am still worried that I may still be affected. The risks associated with the vaccine's effects to the people under 18. Okay, so I think um, it depends on your development. Naman eh. I think uh, there's not really a specific age. Like for me, lang, uh, um, they just... Uh, uh, they just like put that um, parang margin so that uh, it will not somehow like um, it will just give some somehow marginalized uh, population. But then I don't think I think you you can you can get the vaccine already. So even though um, you're worried. Um, for the risk, um, you also need to check yung, yung as a doctor mo if you have other risk. Like, do you have um, other comorbidities as young as you are, or meron ka bang immune, like immune disease, autoimmune disease, or other factors as well? But if you are like exercising, very healthy, uh, most probably you won't have that, um, like, risk or negative effects naman. Thank you, ma'am. So we have another message po. Hello po. Thank you po for the insightful talk. I know a person po who was positive and eventually recovered. The person would share that they wouldn't be able to get COVID-19 again because of the antibodies developed during their recovery. Is it true po? And should they still get the vaccine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's true that they get antibodies from that, and but then the longevity of the antibodies that they will get will just last for a few months or so. But it's better also to if he or she will get a vaccine as well. So if you have both the vaccine induced immunity or protection plus the infection induced immunity or your natural immunity, that would be great or that would be a good um, combination for you. You are like double protected somehow. Thank you, ma'am. So we have a second to the last message or question. Good day, Po. With the noted SARS-CoV-2 variants, 
do you think that the development of vaccines should also adapt into these new variants? Again, where is that Hi. question? I hear um, you now. Good day, Po. With Hi. the noted SARS-CoV-2 variants, do you think that the development of vaccines should also adapt into these new variants? Okay, so actually, um, there are studies that shows that the the vaccines, because the vaccines are already been manufactured, um, unless they will manufacture another batch. So this this batch um, showed um, parang positive effects naman on like different variants, but on a lower somehow lower in uh, effectivity or lower um what's that yung chances for you to have the the disease but then um yeah maybe if they could they could develop a new vaccine because usually i think this one the effectivity of this if i'm not mistaken it will just be somehow a year or two so they may i think develop so it's just like the flu vaccine the winter flu vaccine usually you get a shot every year so so that you went you won't got you won't get uh, infected that much thank you ma'am so we have the last question from mr promsto paharilio paano ho kino compute ang efficacy ng isang vaccine kung may setup po na ginagamit para mag-compute, then hindi na ho ba comparable ang efficacy ng isang vaccine sa iba kung magkaiba ng setup na ginamit? Actually, it's it's very tricky, as especially um, the column that I showed earlier. Um, they have different like sampling size, they have different uh, sampling area, uh, different... Um, like for example, health workers lang, and then all that different type of people, and then um, for the if efficacy ba or infectivity. So I think I'm not really sure of the formula, but then they have um, they have their standard. Um, I think they have uh, a lot across the board. They have the standard. Um, uh, what's this? Uh, percent um, efficacy rate or something like that na to prevent them to to get the infection or the disease but then um yeah for me it's incomparable like for the Sinovac and then for the what Moderna and Pfizer for me uh, it's it's not comparable at this time or at this moment considering the number of samples the type of people, and then the geographical place as well. So yeah. thank you once again, it, ma'am. It's a good point, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sorry, ma'am. So thank you, ma'am. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Again, thank you for the participants for participating in this event. And so to further extend our gratitude to our guest speaker, Professor Saho, let me just call on again um, our guest speaker for the awarding of Certificate of Appreciation. So this certificate of appreciation is awarded to Professor Maria Easter Joy B. Saho for the informative talk entitled, Do Benefits of Vaccines Really Outweigh the Risks of COVID-19? During the College of Science Week 2021, in celebration of the 60th founding anniversary of the University of the Philippines Baguio, held on April 19 to 21, 2021 via Zoom conferencing. Given this 20th day of April 2021 at the University of the Philippines, Baguio, Baguio City, Philippines. Signed by the Chair of the CS Socials Committee, Mr. Romsto R. Pajarillo. By the Chair of the CS Lecture Series Committee, Professor Juancho A. Collera. And by the Dean of the College of Science, Professor Demfna N. Javier. Okay, so again, thank you so much again, ma'am. Thank you so much again to You're our welcome. attendees for sharing Thank with you. us your time. Thank you, ma'am. So again, before we all leave, um, if you have the time, may we encourage everyone to attend our upcoming webinar tomorrow entitled Online Kapihan, Continuing Science Education and Research in the Midst of the Pandemic by CS Faculty and Researchers. So again, 
it is tomorrow starting at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. So again, thank you once again, everyone, and see you there. Stay safe and have a good day.